Overwatch, Route 66. The attackers have just captured the second point. I am playing McCree and I prepare to contest the payload. As I walk up to the corner, I spot this damage boosted Ash. Ash's rifle, the Viper, will deal 85 points of damage at this range, or 170 with a headshot. Mercy's damage boost adds an extra 30% to this, which is enough to instantly delete McCree. It is usually never worth it to take this fight. My best option is to use combat roll to immediately reposition. I have instant access to this ability as it is bound to shift, which I can press with my pinky. Let's take a look at a similar situation. This time, you and Ash are playing around the same corner. Now, what is McCree's best option? In this situation, Ash is in range of McCree's flashbang. This is a golden opportunity to get a pick. But McCree has action delay on flashbang, which gives Ash extra time to escape. If you don't know what action delay is, you should watch my previous video before continuing with this one. We could swap our Shift and E abilities like we did with Genji, then McCree can throw the flashbang immediately. But if we did that, we'd run into action delay when trying to combat roll away from an Ash we can't contest. We'd end up moving the issue someplace else without actually resolving it. The bottom line is, we don't know which of these two positions Ash will play, so in theory, we would want instant access to both of McCree's abilities. This way, we can always guarantee the best outcome. Rearranging keybinds was the approach used in my last video. I restrained myself from using unused keys, such as left alt. We can fix this by binding crouch to left alt, but I won't go down this path, as that's not the point I'm trying to make in this video. And I commented on how I wouldn't make use of side mouse buttons for the sake of efficiency. If that were the case, I'd just tell you to bite this monster. This time, however, there will be no such restriction, so I'll be using keys that developers typically don't use, such as left alt and of course, side mouse buttons. There's something for everyone in this video, whether you use a square or a narrow layout. Also, I promise you, I won't mess with movement keys too much. Let me start by introducing a new concept. We established that in order for McCree to be ready and respond to different situations, he needs to have immediate access to both of his abilities. I will start referring to actions that require this type of attention as urgent. I've mentioned this word before, but I didn't explain it because you weren't ready, but now you are my students. A good rule of thumb to identify whether an action is urgent is to ask yourself, can it be useful when I am in deep <laughs> Sort of like an emergency button that you always want to have available, where even being a few frames too late lowers your chances of success. This includes evasive options, into the void in Apex, defensive options, Genji deflect in Overwatch, or building a wall in Fortnite. Offensive ones too, throwing knife in Call of Duty, or as I just showed you, flashbang. But also the most basic stuff, your movement keys and changing stance are urgent as well. On the other hand, opening your map or your inventory aren't very urgent. Ideally, we want all urgent actions to be easily accessible. This means no reaching because the further the key is, the longer it takes to press. And no keybind conflicts. But in practice, this is impossible. In most games, there are physically more urgent actions than there are fingers on your hand. In Doom Eternal, there are 8 different weapons, any of which you might want to switch to at a moment's notice. You would take tons of extra damage while switching if it wasn't for the slow-mo mechanic that activates every time you open the weapon wheel. This is a trick used to mitigate action delay. When developers choose what finger and key activates which in-game ability, they have to consider tons of factors, such as what does the action accomplish? Does pressing the key equip the skill? Does it instantly activate it? Do you have to hold down the key? What is the cast time and cooldown animation? How frequently is the action used? So on and so forth. And on top of that, they also have to follow strict conventions, such as having jump on spacebar, a staple in video games, or left alt bound to nothing. 
yeah, this perfectly good key typically isn't used by developers due to common shortcuts such as Alt-Tab. This ultimately leads to bad default keybinds. So Jet's Tailwind, arguably the most urgent ability in Valorant, ends up on the E key, while jumping, one of the least urgent actions in the game, gets a first class ticket on Spacebar. Developers are limited, but they give you the tools to fix their shortcomings. Balance. Why does the index have to press like eight keys and your thumb and pinky only press two or three? We can all agree that thumb presses spacebar and pinky presses shift. But depending on how we position our hand, we can change the playing field significantly. Do you have a cute keyboard style? Of course, I'm referring to the angle between your hand and the rows of your keyboard being somewhat less than 90 degrees or an acute angle. If you play like this, I suggest you ditch the control key and start using caps instead. With this playstyle, you have to take advantage of the alt key, which is super comfortable to press. Starwolf moved crouch from control to left alt. That's smart. Crouch on control is pain. At first, you will alt tab out of the game by mistake. An improvement I recommend is to shift all your keybinds towards the right side of the keyboard. So instead of pressing left alt, you press right alt. Now there is no chance of alt-tabbing. Based on the size of your hand, you might find UHJK or IJKL more comfortable. By doing this, we created more available keys for the pinky. And as a bonus, you'll have more room with your mouse. This playstyle allows you to stagger your middle finger over your index so you can strafe right and press this extra key if you need to. If you like to tilt your keyboard the other way, your style is obtuse meaning this angle is somewhat more than 90 degrees. If this is your play style, then you should try and take advantage of pressing the bottom row keys with your thumb. The major downfall of this way of playing is that the pinky has easy access to only two keys, and staggering our fingers to press E isn't viable. A solution is modifying your movement layout very slightly, swapping E and D. This way, you can dual press with the index very effectively. More on dual pressing in a minute. Yeah, I'm a WASE gamer. It's the future. Wait, for real? And then I use CV to lean. This distinction exists because it's very uncomfortable to press both Control and Left Alt at the same time. I've tried, and my hand started hurting. <clears throat> you should identify which style you prefer and take advantage of the strengths I've talked about. The square layout heavily relies on staggering our fingers, so it uses the acute keyboard style. Remember, our entire reason for making more keys available for thumb and pinky is to increase the number of urgent actions we can press at any given moment. A different way of looking at it is that we wish to redistribute the actions in a more balanced way so that the index isn't overloaded. Trust me, being able to access even one extra key reliably with the thumb makes a world of difference. So, let's use this extra thumb key and bind flashbang to it. Now, both of McCree's abilities can be accessed without interacting with our movement. But we should still take some time to carefully decide where to bind everything. This is where dual pressing comes into play. Dual pressing is a technique that uses one finger to press a key and the key right below it, at the same time or sometime after. By far, the most common application of dual pressing is on pinky. For example, in games where you can perform a slide, you can sprint with the top key and have crouch on the key right below it. This allows you to seamlessly perform a slide using only one finger, enabling you, for example, to switch weapons with your thumb all at the same time. Amberwood mentioned in my last video that in the heartbeat example, I could be dual pressing to move left. The reason I didn't address this is because dual pressing with the ring finger may hinder your pinky and middle finger's mobility. Of all the people I know, Darren is the one that knows most about keybinds. These are his thoughts. I have used many different layouts that included dual pressing. My conclusion to dual pressing in WASD is that it's not a solution to the problem. You will still have to release your movement keys to press your action and then press movement again. It's a workaround to the problem and not a solution. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, side mouse buttons. 
In shooters, aim is one of the three main skills to master. You may not be aware of this, but binding stuff like crouch to a side mouse button kind of ruins your aim. The way you get good at aiming is through consistency. It's how you get good at pretty much anything. The way you build consistency when aiming with a mouse is by gripping it in the same way every time, with the same strength every time. So you're shooting your opponent and you have your capacities bound to your mouse. To physically press the button, you must change the force your thumb is applying. Obviously, you are using your thumb to grip your mouse as well. To counteract this force, you must apply an equal and opposite force with your pinky and ring finger. If this force isn't perfectly accounted for, your mouse will drift to the left or to the right, throwing off your aim. This is Newton's second law of motion. It's clear that making all these tiny adjustments makes it harder to aim. Do you seriously think I would have been able to hit these shots if I had deflect bound to side mouse button? No. Aiming is hard enough, even the pros, the best of the best, don't have perfect aim, so why make it harder? If you need further proof, go in a game of your choice and bind fire weapon to side mouse button and let me know how that works. I want to add one more thing, which I don't hold as rigorously. I think that even simply gripping the mouse with your thumb directly on the side mouse buttons is bad for aim. It just seems unlikely to me that you could build consistency around the squishy feel of the buttons. But I may be wrong. I personally like to place my thumb on the sturdy part of the mouse. This gives me the most consistent feel. This means that every time I reach for the side mouse buttons, I suffer action delay. In conclusion, I always avoid binding urgent actions because of bad aim and action delay. Let's take a very close look at the way the mouse is traditionally used. Right click is aim down sights, left click is fire. Scroll wheel, switch weapons. Consider the following very generic example. You are shooting a target that is far enough where aiming down sights is preferred over hip fire. A common strategy in many shooters is to fire your primary weapon and just as you are shooting your last bullets, you swap to your secondary weapon to keep shooting. It is faster to swap than reload. If you scroll with index, then, due to action delay, you will stop firing your weapon and then switch. If you scroll with your middle finger, you are likely to miss your last shot because you aren't aiming down sights anymore. Therefore, we can conclude that scroll wheel isn't good for urgent actions. This is one of the reasons you will almost never see skilled players use the scroll wheel. So they usually switch with the number row. This is better, but still not ideal, because you'll be using fingers that are preoccupied with movement. This is the idea Darren had. Bind your ADS on the keyboard and press it with your thumb if you crouch with pinky. We need crouch and ADS to be independent. Bind the jump to right mouse button or scroll wheel, or someplace on the keyboard. This really depends on how useful jumping is in the specific game you're playing. Now you have made a lot of room for urgent actions on your mouse that you can access with your middle finger instantly. If like me, you feel more comfortable using the scroll wheel with your index, simply rebind fire from left mouse button to right mouse button. Now the free finger is your index. It might not be obvious at first, but this is pretty game changing. Let's fix Jet once and for all. Boom. Instant tailwind in any direction at your fingertip. This is how I will be playing games from now on. Not only will it make my reactions faster, but it will make playing a lot more comfortable as I won't have to reach for keys as much anymore. There are still some limitations to consider. Some in-game menus disable the scroll wheel, or it's impossible to hold it input bound to scroll wheel. I intend to start a series where I go into a specific game and come up with the best keybinds I can to drastically improve how the game can be played. Let me know what game you would like to see me break. If you are watching this video around the time it released, I am live on Twitch if you want to ask me questions or simply say hi. As usual, thank you for watching. And I will see you next time.